what is PDFR? Um, PDFR was created 2016 by the Twain Working Group for Twain Direct, a modern standard for driver agnostic network and cloud scanning. Previously, the last 25 years, we had scanner drivers for personal computers that were running directly on the PC, and obviously that doesn't scale in the mobile world. So we were looking for ways to dramatically simplify this process and enable this new mobile use cases. And obviously you don't want to install a driver for each scanner on your small or tablet, uh, phone or tablet. So making scanning as a uh, whole easier and just work um, without installing a driver. So historically, raw image data was transferred, even with Twain drivers on Windows and Macintosh or Linux. And for example, in mem memory with pointers and all this stuff, and obviously um, pointers and raw memory doesn't translate very well to cloud computing. And we were thinking, should we transfer images as BMP, bitmap, TIFF, JPEG? But all of those had major drawbacks. A JPEG, for example, can only handle one image, um, doesn't support black and white, TIFF has other compatibility problems, and then there's also modern stuff like encryption, digital, signatures, digital signatures, and all these other advanced use cases. So that is how we ended up with PDF. However, why a new PDF standard? And PDF, as you know, is very versatile, supports nearly everything, and, and 1,000 pages of standard, including vector graphics and text and 3D and rich multimedia, but that's everything we don't need for cloud scanning, right? And you don't accidentally want to get this from some wild scanner, um, for example, hacker out there um, trying to get into your uh, network, right, with a, with a scanner, for example. So the 1,000 pages is, of course, not what we want application vendors for scanning to, to implement um, or have a full PDF framework. So we distilled this down to just the bare essentials that we needed for image transfer and worked then together with the PDF Association as a PDF standard for subset for image, raster data, scans, photos, and printing. The complexity is even if you just receive any PDF, you might not have one image, right? Even if you tell users that's what you're supposed to do, you, you get everything, right? One image, multiple images, larger than the page. Obviously, I mean, everything valid use cases and, and totally um, useful for normal office workflow, but not something you want to get on your smartphone from a scanner and stitching everything together and, and so on. So PDFR has a very well-defined um, semantic for that, only supporting images, one image or striped images, um, and uh, with some compressions allowed, uh, well-defined image data placement alignments. It supports PDFA, uh, compatibility that you can archive that directly, ICC profiles, and as initially mentioned, encryption and digital signatures allowing modern workflows where you can already on, on a scanner sign with, with sophisticated smart cards or other means who scans this document and encrypt it. Um, everything previously not possible or at least not in a portable way, um, not like one vendor's proprietary solution. So unlike, for example, JPEG, we, of course, support multiple pages. Um, no affine transform, uh, transformation. Again, making everything simpler, right? Think like a JPEG or a digital camera still photograph that a smartphone, a tablet, doesn't need to process the data in any way. Um, very easy. So what this allows is very easy data access, right? Even if you would tell scanner vendors you are only allowed to put one image on the page, you would still get everything. So, and then you would need to rotate it, clip it, and so on. So making image data access highly optimized, determinable, and um, also this means that no page content stream needs to be passed. It's of course in there for standard compliance, but you don't need to evaluate that you can use images directly. Again, greatly simplifying uh, this process. and enabling PD, PDFR to be a true substitute for even for TIFF and JPEG uh, files um, theoretically. Um, so to summarize the benefits, it um, is much easier, efficient, um, and allows extracting original raster data, original meaning not transform. For example, 
in proper PDF, in full PDF, you could even skew them just a little bit with, with like, let's say, one degree or so, and this would lead to aliasing artifacts, so you would, of course, not get the original image data, or at least not easily. So that means making this a true one-to-one -one image data tron file format, like, like T4JPEG. Simplicity, compatibility, um, again, this are full-featured PDFs that work with any other viewer and consumer application out there and specif specifically optimized for mobile devices and, and cloud applications. Um, doesn't require a full PDF processor, so you don't need big libraries, sync mobile phone, sync scanner, sync cloud workflow, and uh, can even be easier to deal with than TIFF files, actually, due to all the complexities there, even TIFF is endiness, uh, um, supporting both endiness, big and little endiness, and improving security and um, do significant, smaller, trusted compute base, right? You don't need huge libraries, everything is extremely simple, and so on. So, for who is that? That is, of course, in our use case, scanning, but it can be used everywhere as modern TIFF and JPEG replacement, scanners, printers, multifunction devices, smartphones, theoretically even digital cameras think photographers could sign their um, photographs with digital rights management for copyright uh, imprints or stuff is digital signat signatures. Or, yeah, any image processing workflow, for example, uh, let's say interbanker, uh, interbanking or other um, uh, implementations, you could agree with your APIs to only handle PDFR and thus uh, completely emulin, uh, eliminating all the complexities of otherwise uh, full PDF. Uh, mobile cloud applications, e-governments, for example, theoretically you could have like an e-governments to improve security only allow PDFR files if you wanted to, again, to improve security, for example, right, or processing time and complexities. So how does all of this simplify train direct um, for the scanning? It takes all of those raw data processing out of the application, right? If you write a mobile application in, in this day and age with train direct and train cloud, the new, uh, it's, it's an open standard, a royalty free open standard, you can rely on getting files that you, you, you expect with one image or striped images without any fancy tricks or rich media um, and, and so on. And thus greatly simplifying the user experience, the programmer developer experience, and making sure that image transfers work reliable um, with, with, with any scanner you might get there. So Twain Direct is the same um, in simplifying this uh, scanner interfacing. Previously, you had to deal with pointer-based C APIs of, of calling stuff, of setting properties. It's, of course, error-prone. It's complex. So the whole Twain Direct and Cloud modern networked API uh, simplifies this dramatically, that you don't have C-like APIs, but JSON-based web-like web APIs that emphasis on success. So with classic Twain, you would need to set properties, you would need to negotiate capabilities. What kind of scanner do I have? Does it have a flatbed? Does it have an automated document feeder? Does it support color, grayscale, duplex, and, and all this stuff? And, and hundreds of features, barcode, skewing, de-skewing. Um, all of this is no longer necessary. You simply send JSON uh, job configurations um, theoretically, you don't even need to do that. Theoretically, you can just say scan and you get the scanner's default, which probably usually is pretty good. But of course, you can configure that, like you want color and so on, or even, or like 300 DPI. But even then, unless you put exception specifications in there, this is just a, suggest a suggestion for the scanner. So if the scanner doesn't have color, doesn't have 300 DPI, you might get 200 DPI gray, unless you write in there exception. Um, I want that. That greatly simplifies uh, the user error handling and, and dealing with configurations. Like you, you don't get an error like color not supported or 3DPI. You scan and you get an image. And um, again, making sure that the users are not frustrated, they get the best matching, closest matching to the specification without any complexities. And with PDFR, full PDFs that work with any application that they directly can send to government sites, banking sites, and, and other workflows. 
PDF directly yeah, from Scanner and MFPs, um, and it's fully driverless, right? You don't need to install anything. So in the future, like Train Direct is out now um, for some years, so the first scanners hit the market, and you don't need to install anything, right? Whether it's your personal computer with a Train Direct aware application and the scanner, you plug it in, for example, you, you LAN, um, and you choose a scanner and you can just scan, right? Without anything, no driver, nothing uh, completely like web-like, uh, driverless, including for mobile devices, small phones and smartphones. Um, and this also means that application and solution providers can focus on their workflow and don't need to deal with incompatibilities, um, like pointers, like, like invalid pointers, uh, raw memory handling, um, and all those kind of low-level graphic details. Um, so, so all of this helped vastly simplifying the development uh, of, of applications, of workflows, um, and transitioning scanning into the mobile uh, and, and network connected world. So what are the next steps for PDFR? Um, now with all of this in, out in the market since some years, we're of course looking for the next revisions, and um, for that we uh, probably will add support for object streams. Again, right now it's very simple for the simplest implementation we could come up with in the beginning. Um, also, object streams, as you know, probably for a little bit more in encryption, that some surrounding metadata is less visible or not visible and encrypted. And improved, updated new encryption algorithms, uh, the yearly um, PDF standardization of, of the latest in, in security, algorithms, hashes, um, and, and so on. New compression algorithms, um, more to that in a, in a second, like um, high efficient image codex that we are working on with the working group. So in this process, we actually started to talk with the PDF association with new um, image compression. This, this is also why we didn't initially add um, JPEG 2000 because it already was like kind of 20 years old and already better. It's relatively complex for not so much gain and new codex um, already at, at that time, two, uh, four years ago in the market. Um, I will give you a full overview uh, after, after that. So further improvements also, so why do we want further improvements, right? So right now the best compression in PDFR is JPEG, but of course with cellular bandwidth, now with all this network scanning, it's often limited, right? Uh, think like hotels like this, reception might be limited, trade shows uh, out in the countryside, international roaming, like sales people traveling through, through Europe. Um, all of this you do not always have the bandwidth. Um, to send very big files, obviously. And then database, stor uh, storage, uh, ZANs, storage area networks, um, storing millions of users at the scale of Apple and Google, Microsoft, all the cloud stuff, um, or your small startup with millions of users. Users at scale, data adds up, right? Also online banking, e-government, so smaller the files are better. So we, need, we obviously need smaller PDF files. And we're working on this. So, Again, JPEG, all of these compressions currently are very old. JPEG from 1992, discrete cosine transform, DCT. Um, about 10 to 1 compression ra ratio, of course, you can stress it, but usable use case is 10 to 1. About Working on very fixed 8 by 8 macro blocks, um, bad for uh, non-photograph things, synthetic images, sharp edges, tables, uh, graphics. And as I mentioned, JPEG 2000 is also very old, right? Uh, as the name implies, from 2000, to, uh, 22 years now. It's a discrete uh, wavelet transform, DWT, uh, relatively um, exotic, and mostly implemented, uh, uh, mostly improves multi-resolution, progressive transmission, but JPEG 2000 is also slow, right? There is a new high throughput JPEG 2000 standard, but everything is quite dated and, and yeah, 22 years. So we looked at, where do you look? Of course, you look at existing video codecs um, that some are already using, for example, Apple's iPhone, Google Android. Um, Apple is using Hike, that is internally H.265 video compression for videos um, that can yield a 1,000 to 1 compression ratio, but that is motion pictures with, with delta frames and, and like 15 or so, uh, every 15th keyframe. So for still images, it is less, right, naturally, because you don't have the delta frames. However, Hike H265 is heavily patented, um, so that is maybe not ideal. There are others like WebP, um, I believe it was mostly from Google. Also Google also purchased some stuff and then freed some stuff. AVIF, AV1, 
JPEG XL and high throughput JPEG, which also is also already dated a little bit. So there's a lot to choose from, and um, Google is using WebP, and uh, others like Netflix or Google and uh, Mozilla are also supporting AV1, uh, AVIF already, or, already. So we are working on this already, so this is an ongoing discussion group um, inside the PDF working group uh, with the PDF Association. And currently it looks like we will maybe at AV1, um, AVIF, and JPEG XL to the to future PDF standards or extensions, uh, hopefully in the next two years. And so J JPEG XL is also from the JPEG working group. That's basically the, the 2020s uh, anniversary update uh, here of, of JPEG, JPEG 2000 based compression technology. Um, combines, combines ideas from JPEG, lossless, WebP, and FLIF, that's some intermediate standard uh, from Google and others, I, I, I think. And so that improves compression. JPEG originally, so original old JPEG, as I mentioned, has like 10 to 1 compression ratio. And JPEG XL can easily improve that to 20, if not 50 to 1. I, I will show you an example in a second. And that's, of course, a easily five times improvement with better image quality, right? Five times improvement with at times better image quality, which is, is quite outstanding. JPEG XL is very, um, has, has very, very huge limits of something. So, for example, 4,100 channels, not really sure why we would need so many. So, that is like RGB, three channels plus alpha, CUMYK. Um, I believe you could use it for spot colors, sync gold, silver, matte finish, and stuff. Um, crazy limits. Um, if you want to use them um, for something. High maximum resolution, that is also some other codecs don't have such a high resolution, um, which otherwise you would need to start to stitch images together in some tiling fashion. So that's uh, 1, 000, uh, 1, uh, 1 billion pix pixels, also 2 to the power of 30 minus 1. Um, layer tiles uh, for high DPI, for example. So high DPI, that means you can have two images in one, like one low resolution layer and a high resolution layer. For example, for modern smartphone screens, um, uh, high DPI, like two times scaling and stuff. Uh, variable perceptual um, metric adjustable quality region. So that means that you can have some areas with a higher quality, like some cent center area with more details. You can compress less to, have to, to retain more detail and have some background areas with much higher compression for less details to improve compression. Everything that you can't do with JPEG, of course. Um, high bit depth, wide gamut HDR, high dynamic range. I will also um, add to that a bit in a second. And um, it, that what makes JPEG XL outstanding is that it works with any kind of content. The other video codecs usually work best with natural content, like photographs. JPEG XL works also very good with illustrations, renders, like 3D renders, um, scans, uh, medical images. And it's even backward compatible, so it has a special mm, support to take good old JPEGs and that um, discrete cosine uh, coefficients uh, and just recompress them with more modern compression techniques to have up to 20% 20, 20 is not much, but without any loss, without any new artifacts, you can make uh, good old fashioned JPEG files 20% smaller. It can also store PNG, ping, RGB, and 8-bit uh, uh, and GIF files directly um, uh, in this, uh, in the, with the same compression scheme and um, with, with, without any additional loss and uh, always produces smaller files uh, than those inputs. So this is an example. Uh, maybe you see that a little bit, um, I hope, uh, on the presentation. So that is just some old office paper uh, we found, we, we tested with. So you see the JPEG that is extremely squeezed down, right? So uh, we, we basically wanted to see how much can we um, squeeze those co codecs down to produce the smallest file possible that you can still read. And JPEG is still super large, right? So this color scan, like blue dot matrix on, on yellow, um, 
160K, right? 161K with JPEG. And that is already, I mean, if you make it smaller, you, can, you can't read it anymore, right? And this you see, this has heavy, uh, it's probably see it has heavy compression artifacts, right? This is a typical JPEG, good old fashioned JPEG, which this is, by the way, what most people use today, right? Very few people use JPEG 2000 in PDF. So that is a compression technology that most people, most PDFs have in, today, um, in, in PDF today. Um, next to that, how much better are these modern codecs? What, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about, again, like five times smaller, right? JPEG XL, it looks even better, right? Uh, the background is less blocky, um, the text is sharper, um, and like it, it's, it's amazing, right? 30 kilobytes, um, whatever, you can divide that. And you can make it even smaller, right? This is just an, an average of what we tested with where files usually tended to be smaller, still readable. And this were exactly the compression results we were looking for and are possible today and we want to st standardize next. Um, so all of this is already amazing and then there's one more thing, right? This modern high dynamic range um, images, mostly from motion, motion pictures. Um, so what, what is that about? Historically, that was about, about just more dynamic range. That means instead of having 8-bit, you historically could already for decades have, even in JPEG, have 10 or 12 bits. For example, where, where would you use that? You would use that for X-ray images, or satellite, um, or just artwork. Nowadays, you would use this also for your uh, photos from, from your phone. This is pseudo HDR mode there. Um, stitching two different uh, photos uh, together, but also motion pictures, right? And so if you would want to um, import screen captures of motion pictures in PDF today, like this, this modern HDR motion, motion pictures, you couldn't really do that in PDF. And that is the second part of ongoing discussions in, in PDF working groups, uh, how to handle high dynamic range, this modern high dynamic range that, that, that is more than just um, this bit rate. Because what, what is different now is that previously we had SDR, this um, previous contact, uh, content, um, that was for like 100 nits. And this new HDR, it's changing that from not just more bits, but also higher brightness. And what that means is that you have some areas, think uh, here, uh, you know, Lord, Lord of the Rings, all the other um, uh, stuff, um, like uh, fireworks um, and all these bright scenes with higher than standard um, luminance, and that is a huge change for PDF because that's something that we currently don't handle in PDF or there is nothing defined for that, and that would theoretically change the rendering of PDFs entirely, how to deal, how to render that with surrounding, you have, like you want to discuss a storyboard for your motion pictures and stuff, and you have there, you, in the future you want to include HDR content uh, to discuss with your editors and writers and stuff. Um, to support that, and that certainly needs some additional changes in metadata. Um, this HDR videos right now, they already include metadata for all this HDR handling of HDR 400 and, and, and 1000 and so on, for all those uh, increased brightness for up to 1000 if not 10,000 nits. And so this is a huge topic and probably needs some more years. Um, basically, this is, this is kinder simplified to more than one, because currently we have like black and white points and calibrations with ICC profiles, so it's basically simplified kinder more brightness than 100% um, white point uh, luminance. I, I would summarize that too. And so yeah, that needs some metadata um, for this mapping, for this luminance mapping, for this handling, and, and how, to re oops, sorry, how, to how to render that, um, especially with the surrounding non-HDR content. Uh, so feature comparison, um, I've made a quick table for you. If you want to have an overview of how these different codecs perform, what features do they have, old-fashioned JPEG, what we use today, JPEG 2000, what is theoretically available and some people use, um, then some other codecs that we may or may not include in future PDF. And most likely, and we could theoretically include all, it's just patents and implementation, trusted code base, how much complexity do we want to have in PDF in um, PDF applications. So currently AV1, AVIF, and JPEG XL are the biggest uh, um, or most favorite um, codecs. 
um, how do they compress photos, synthetic images, do they support uh, lossless compression, um, encoding, decoding performance, uh, of course. You don't have one codex that is best, right? They all, one is slower, one is faster, one is better compression. JPEG XL over L is surprisingly good, but it's, it also has, I mean, it's, it's developed not for motion pictures, but also still content, and has, a, has special modes to encode uh, synthetic content. So it's no surprise that it performs often the best. Um, yeah, maximum precision in, in bits per channel and uh, supported channels. Um, so how should we add this to PDF? Of course, uh, the, the most obvious thing is uh, additional X object filters. Currently we use DCT decode and JPX decode for those who work with PDF stuff internally or look into PDFs with Notepad++. So it probably would probably mean adding new JPEG XL decode, AVIF or so, or maybe BMF F decode. That stands for base media file format because many of those file formats already use one base media file format standard. So theoretically we could, again, it's all open for discussion. You can join these groups and, and discuss with that discuss with us, uh, with us about what you would prefer the most, what would make the most sense. Um, something of that sort will probably be added to PDF sometime soon, hopefully. And the biggest question is how to handle extra channel, channels and HDR content, uh, how to render that in the PDF rendering model. So what are the benefits um, for PDF as a whole and uh, our Twain cloud scanning, specifically up to five times smaller PDF images that is certainly something that, that is just a 20th generational improvement in image codex. Um, that mean for, for the scanning use case, that means, of course, faster uh, file transfers, uh, sending an email, like on the go from here, you answer customer, um, roaming and, and 4G, 5G, uh, like satellite, all the modern life styles there, um, um, somewhere with satellite roaming. Um, so that certainly is a huge plus. And even for not only mobile, but in general, all the PDF storage, right? Database, storage, area networks, all those archives, uh, sync national archives, um, but also business, uh, like theoretically plus minus five, five times smaller archives, potentially in the future. Um, also this new HDR, more than eight to 10 bit uh, per sample support there, or, and more than 100 percent higher uh, luminance rendering content. And some of those codecs are already GPU hardware isolated. I guess there might be nearly none that accelerates JPEG 2000 and very few that accelerate JPEG. Um, I think the iPhone theoretically supports JPEG acceleration, but I think Apple is not using that and which, yeah. Um, and of course many personal computer graphics do not accelerate uh, JPEG. So the benefit of some of those codecs would be you would have GPU acceleration for it, for decompressing or even uh, compressing that. Um, that would be a huge benefit for everyone, but especially scanner use cases there, um, scanners, medical devices, um, to have uh, GPU accelerated compression. And um, also directly embeddable from modern smartphones as well as archiving, right? We have some inquiries who want, because nowadays everyone makes photos on their smartphone, even uh, in the government. And so some of the stuff needs to be archived. And currently, if you make a highly compressed codec picture on your iPhone or Google Android phone, uh, you have either H.265 or um, AVIF um, for iOS and Android, and you can't directly put it into a, into a PDF. You need to decompress it, you need to recompress it, and you, uh, it's of course not the original anymore, right? And not only it's not, not the original, it will be even um, larger, you will have more and new compression artifacts, so that is certainly not ideal and can be improved with this codex. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, so, uh, all right, I mentioned this already, Wi-Fi scanning, um, obviously, um, basically I said this already directly. Um, yeah, that, and also from the scanner, that also means it, for long-term archiving, you get a rec not only like today from those train direct scanners, you can get a PDF that you do not need to further process, but then in the future, like some five or so years with next generation scanners, with, with that new PDF standard, you could then directly archive your highly archived, uh, your highly compressed images directly from a scanner, right? Without having to recompress them for JPEG 2000 or something if you 
want more space efficient storage in your national archive. Um, yeah, long time storage and um, also for scanners, um, if we choose codecs or develops in uh, hardware compression, um, can dramatically uh, improve uh, performance. Uh, as currently very few, I mean, there, there are some JPEG 2000 hardware acceleration exists, but it is so complex and expensive that very, I mean, only the highest expensive throughput scanners might support that. So that would be a huge benefit for um, everyone using uh, image transfers. So that is uh, the summary how PDFR transformed uh, scanning. Um, it's trend direct, direct PDF workflow and how we further intend to improve performance and PDF compression for everyone.